Hi, I'm Fesma, 3D artist based in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My work has this surreal yet sci-fi vibe with a consistent color palette of red, blue, and purple. And today, I'm going to be showing you some different ways you can use the Voronoi Fracture for some cool effects like these. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. To show this effect to you, I'm just using a simple cube like this. Uh, so if we drop the cube inside the Voronoi Fracture, you will get like the standard aesthetics of a Voronoi Fracture. And that's coming out a point generator that you can find inside the sources tab in the Voronoi Fracture. The thing is, uh, the way the Voronoi works, it accepts any type of points. So if, for example, I disable the point generator and get these two nodes inside uh, the Voronoi Fracture, node 1 and node 2, you will notice that if I change for the front facing camera it might be a little bit better. Uh, every single node here is basically the center of a fragment object inside the Voronoi fracture, right? So if I move these around, boom, you get a different, uh, you get a di different division. If I duplicate this and add another one to the mix, uh, once again, we have a different result because now it, it is subdivided into three objects. So Having this in mind, it gets a little bit interesting when you feed other type of objects uh, inside the Vronoi. And as long as the objects are made out of points, you should be totally fine. It should work. So let's delete these points here. Uh, let me grab a plane, simple plane. So if I switch this plane to Z axis and then feed these to the Vronoi fracture, you will get a simple checkboard style uh, fracture to your object. And right off the bat, like it's already different than what you what you see out there when it comes to Vronoi. So if you change the segments, it will automatically change the Vronoi too. So this is basically uh, getting the, every single point on the plane and using this as data to fracture the object. So if even if you move the plane, you get a different result, right? Because right now you have points on the top and on the bottom. And if you move this away from the object, it's now only considering the points on the top. So you're basically doing a little strip. Uh, you can do uh, discs, for example. I use this a lot on a bunch of artworks and I should be going through some of them uh, later on. If I feed the disc to the Ronald fracture, uh, you now have this type of, of fracture here. It's pretty damn cool. If you increase the radio, no, sorry, not the radius, the rotation segments, you get even more and change the size of the disc, you get a different size in the center, right? Another type of thing that you can use are splines. Uh, let's go to the front facing camera, draw a simple spline over here, and we can use the spline inside the Vronoi fracture too. Otherwise, uh, after all, the splines are made of points, right? And the, the cool thing is that for each of these objects, you can always play around with the distribution mode. So right now it's even. So if I increase the number of points, it will even evenly distribute them along the spline. But I can use other type of distributions too. Uh, and that, that counts for every type of object that you drop in here. So like steps, uh, you get counts and vertices, right? So I highly encourage you to no matter the object that you drop inside the Vronoi fracture, you can always experiment with different uh, distribution modes. Okay, so as an example, I wanted to show you this artwork. Uh, I basically use uh, a cross, a spline cross to drive the effect of the Vronoi fracture. So if I click here, you will see that I'm evenly distributing 120 points around the splines. And these points, especially the ones on this two sides are being used by the generator to fracture the object, right? So in the middle of them, I, I even, uh, I, I took use of the empty space to draw like a neon line across them. And you will notice like this render here, it's a little bit different than this one. It's because I, I always like to give a kind of organic feel and manual touch to the fracture. You can try to give more variation by using shaders and effectors but sometimes I, I like to do this manually. So what I do, I turn this object into a, a editable. And let me just disable this and show you the final result. Uh, that's the fracture object here. So after that, 
uh, I just I manually uh, kind of move these around to give a more uh, organic and disorganized feel. But yeah, this is a prime example of that technique that I just explained used on a real artwork. This one's another cool project that uses the same technique. And this one, I think that the, the most uh, different thing that we have is that I'm using some fields, some, some MoGraph fields to give a little bit more variation to the fracture. So as you can see, uh, I have multiple cylinders. There are like a decrease in the scale of each fragment. So it gives a little bit more variation. And one important thing to notice is that I really wanted all the fracture pieces to be facing um, the camera. So for that, both the generator disc and this later on this neon disc, they have a camera tag. This way I'm, I can make sure that everything is like fully perpendicular uh, to the camera, right? And of course, for all the other uh, cylinder fields, I had to, to put the same camera tags, make sure that they are facing the camera. But yeah, nothing hugely special. As you can see, it's the same simple technique that I explain, explained before, but applied to another artwork. So yeah, I really hope that you liked this tutorial and I'm quite excited to see what people can do with this. Because once again, it's a really simple way to use Vernoy Fracture but it's a really creative one too. So yeah, see you in the next one.